glory to God. Everyone, everyone here and everyone joining us online and joining us in all the other churches, I want to welcome you to church this Sunday morning and believing that the Lord will speak to you in a very specific way in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen? Glory to God. All right, so we're talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And in the particular teaching today, I want to cover two wide areas, and I'm praying that God will really help me. I'm going to cover this area, and I'm going to say two things. Why is it that I'm not hearing God clearly? Why is it that I am not hearing God clearly? That's the first question I want to answer. And the second thing is this. Once I have a guidance of the Spirit, why is it not working? So the first question has to do with, why is it that, you know, I've heard the voice of God before, but there seems to be this area where I'm praying for something, where I'm looking up to God for something, and it's now very difficult in this particular area. The second thing also is that, well, I've had the lead of the Holy Spirit. The question is that, why is the guidance of the Holy Spirit, why is it not working in my life? As it should. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 28 in verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 28 in verse 6. Wow. That's some scriptures that when you just see, you say, wow. The Bible says, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him, not neither by dreams, not by urine, nor by the prophet. Well, a lot of people, let me just, let me, let's just go deeper for just one minute. Let's just take it deeper. Let's just do Bible class. In the Old Testament, the, high, the priest used to wear the priest garment. And it has, and near the breastplate of judgment, it's called the breastplate of judgment, it has two pockets. And there used to be two things there, called what? The urine and the what? And the Turim is the Urim and the Turim. The Urim and the Turim was used to bring guidance. So, the way to basically explain to all of you that are Africans is this the same way they have at least had something they put on the floor. The priests in the Old Testament had those things. They were, so it was in their pocket. They would just bring it out. It was the Urim and the Turim. Glory to God. It's very, it's very important for you to know. That the Urim and the Turim was close to the breastplate of righteousness. Meaning that it's a consciousness of righteousness that makes you function in guidance. In the Old Testament, it was the breastplate of judgment. In the New Testament, it's the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Glory to God. But I mean, that, that's just by the way, because I saw Urim there. I wanted to, because a lot of you don't even know what Turim and Urim. I mean, one of these days we should just take time and study you know, well, I mean, we're going to also study the priesthood. This is the period where we're going to talk about the priesthood. It's going to be a good study. We're going to study about the priesthood. So the Bible says this. He says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, I, I, I wanted to notice the construction. And the Lord answered him not. The truth is that I believe that that was poorly constructed. The reason why is that Paul eventually, because God had always been talking to Saul. But he had not been responding. And it got to a place where God spoke to him so much that what eventually happened, what eventually happened was that he could not just receive it again. And one of the things I taught previously is the concept of resisting the Holy Spirit and quenching the Holy Spirit. Okay. What is resisting the Holy Spirit? You heard that word before. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Because, yeah, just to provide some context. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. I don't know if you have it. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. There's a concept resisting the Holy Spirit. And what? Quenching the Holy Spirit. Acts 7 51. The Bible says this. Yea, steep naked and uncircumcised in heart. Yea, that do always take note of the word. You always do what? Resist the Holy Ghost. What does resist the Holy Ghost mean? I want to explain to you. In resisting the Holy Ghost is an active opposition to what the Holy Ghost wants to do. I'll give an example, and I gave this example 
you know, some of you that were in my service previously. I said, one of the things you'll see about resisting the Holy Ghost is this, very powerful. <laughs> it's very powerful. You would notice, very powerful, that when God called Jonah to go to Nineveh, where did Jonah go to? Jonah went to Tashish. You know where Tashish is? If Nineveh is on the west, Tashish is on the what? On the east. It went in exact opposite direction. The, the, this has to do with you perceive what the will of God is and you consciously begin to walk against it. And we're going to read the story of a man today. That's resisting the Holy Ghost. God wants you to do something and so that you don't do... I'll give an example. Maybe you're someone... You know, you literally oppose it. Maybe you're someone... Look, at someone like Cain. What did God say about Cain? God said this about Cain. God said about Cain when he didn't take his offering. He said, if you did well, what does that mean? As Cain was going to give the offering, Cain knew what to do. But Cain resisted that and gave what he wanted. It was a resistance of the Holy Spirit. And you can be here, you know that God is not in any migration deal for your life. He is in need for your sister. He is in need for your brother. But for you, it's not there. And you know the next thing you do? You say, you know what? I'll put in the application. If the visa comes out and I get the PR, then it's God's will. See, you're already going in the way that is opposing the direction of the Spirit. I'll give you an example. These are examples of people quenching. God puts in your heart and says, sow a seed. And as he says, sow the seed, that was the same way you remember that, ah, I've been trying to buy shares. When I buy the shares, you make it difficult for you to do it. That's opposing it. What is quenching? What's quenching the Spirit? First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. Quenching the Spirit. So, opposing is an active violation of what we know. What's quenching? Look at Acts chapter, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. This is what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. Because as we begin to explain the concept, why people are not hearing from God, one of the things I will keep going back to is this. The reason why some people are not hearing from God is this. There is a lot of quenching and there is a lot of what? Resisting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, quench not the spirit. What does quench not the spirit mean? Quench not the spirit means that when the spirit is tearing up something in you, don't suppress it. Let it go. In the, so, listen to me. In the process of resisting the spirit, there is an opposition. In the process of quenching the spirit, there is a passive ignoring. It's passive. It's still disobedience, but it's not opposition. You are just ignoring it. And you know what I mean? You, you are just ignoring it. And a good example is this. Esther. When Esther heard that the Jews were in trouble, what did the Jews She didn't oppose it. She just said, leave me alone. She ignored it. She knew within herself that this was her destiny. But because it was not comfortable, she chose to ignore it. But the Bible tells us of people like Mordecai that knows how to talk sense in your head. The Bible says, Mordecai, stand up by words. The question to you is this. Are you resisting or quenching the work of the Spirit in your life? And it boils down to one thing, trust. If you trust God, you will need to work together for good. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Same thing. Do you read about the man called Aeneas? The person that laid hands on Saul to see before he became Paul. The Bible says, when God told him to go and pray for, he said, brother Paul. He said, I've heard he've come to arrest us. He was, begin, see, when you want to suppress, you begin to negotiate. You, see, suppression has, quenching has things. You begin to negotiate. I can't do it. Can you, let, let's just use this. That, that's what you're trying to do. But the other part is this. This is the other part. Not just you negotiate. The other thing you begin to do, you begin to postpone. You said, um, I will do it next week. I will do it next month. I will do it. The reason why is that you are hoping somewhere within your heart that with time, that conviction will begin. And it will. Because the Holy Ghost is not a witch. It will not force his will on you. So, the longer you ignore his voice, the thinner the voice becomes. 
The question today is this. Are you resisting the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Or you are quenching? So, you know what God said. You're not doing it. You just leave it there. And ultimately, that voice will fail. You know what God said really about that business? You just leave it there. Ultimately, that voice will just fail. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So, what had happened to Samuel, Saul, Saul, Saul was this. Over time, Saul knew what to do, what's going against it. And this is what happens when you begin to resist the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will get to a place where the Bible calls you, you become dull of hearing. You will hear, but you will not be able to discern. Because, for example, let me give an example. Let me, just a great example. Have you seen, some of you have parents here that can no longer drive. Yes or no? But were they able to drive before? What happened? Because of long abstinence from driving, then they lost touch. Because of long abstinence from following and yielding what God is doing, eventually what happens to you is that what? You lose touch. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So let's go back to First Samuel chapter 28 verse 6. It says, and Samuel inquired of the Lord. And it says, the Lord answered him not by dreams, nor by urine, or by the prophet. So the first question is this, which is very powerful. Why is it that I'm praying? So someone says, I'm praying about this contract, but it's not working out. Someone says, I'm praying about our marital crisis. I'm not hearing distinctly from heaven. Someone says, I'm praying about this. Why is it not working out? Let's, let, let's look at this. It's a very powerful story. Let's turn to... Let's turn to Numbers, chapter 22. Why is it I'm, hear, I'm not hearing God clearly? So you will notice some people can really discern the will of God in an area, but they are not able to really discern the will of God in another area. <laughs> ah. Look at what the Bible says here. Numbers 22, verse 8. The Bible says that this was when um, the king, Balak, had sent men to Balaam. The Bible says, and he said unto the people he sent to them, he said, Lord, yet this night, and I will bring you word as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And, the Lord, and God came unto Balaam and said, What are these men with thee? The manner of conversation shows God's disposition. When you begin to hide things from God, you know you are in error. Are, are you hearing me? When you cannot actively pray about things, you know you are in error. When you say that, it's when I submit the application I will pray. You know you're in error. You know why? You want it to be in process first before you pray. And the reason why is that you already know. See the man of God. What God says, says, God says, first of all, what are you doing with them? God did not even say, they are right or they are wrong. The next thing is this. <laughs> this is very powerful. And Balaam said unto the Lord, Balak, the, king, the son of Zelah, the king of Moab, has sent them unto me and said, Behold, there is a people that come out of Egypt, which cover the face of the earth and cover it now. Curse me then, but adventure. What he was saying was this very powerful. Balak, was, Balak the king was a very powerful guy. And politicians understand this. You, they understand this. They understand that physical authority rests on spiritual authority. So what they were saying was that we cannot overcome this people by military power. But if you can curse them spiritually, the spiritual world will weaken them. Then the physical thing will take over. The challenge with Christians is this, this is the challenge with Christians. Christians will release the spiritual power, but there's no physical action. Are you hearing me? So the blessing has been released, but there's no action to release to catch the blessing. So what the king said was this. He said, I know how this works. If you can curse them, I mean, just after this, I, you, know, you know, just um, some minutes ago, someone walked up to me and I asked her, how did they come to church? And she told me, he said, well, my sister invited me to church. I said, oh, your sister, what's her name? Do I know her? I said, you don't know her. He said, but my sister has been looking for a child. He said, last year you gave a word and you mentioned her name. Her name is Amaka. I said, Amaka, you're getting pregnant right now and all of that. He said, my sister got pregnant. She just actually gave birth. He said, it was that testimony that brought me to the church. So the question is this. When I said, Amaka, you will get pregnant. Was he the one that slept with her? Uh, Christians will pray that God bless. God release the blessing. But you will have to do something to make the blessing come in. All this teaching that says when you sow, you sow your way into prosperity. Giving a loan can never make you rich. 
I, I'm telling you, don't be deceived though. Uh -huh. Neither than giving and prayer alone make you rich. The Bible says the hand of the diligent bear root. Are you listening to me? So this philosophy you have in your mind by just going, I'll become excited. You know, don't fool yourself. Or any church you go to, you go just pack your road and know you're in the wrong place. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. So see what the Bible says. So the king said this. So what the king was saying was that there's a supernatural dimension to success. And I want the prophet to use it. Now the other part is that, is that all these smart tech guys that are very smart, they wear t-shirts, are very smart. And they think that just because of their wisdom, they can get it. That's why they've been looking for capital for two years. They can't get it. Because there's a spiritual dimension that opens door that no man can shut. I'm a co -balade. I say, last, last two weeks, I, I mean, yesterday during, were well, you the one that told me about the song that got 1.2 billion? Uh, yeah. Just the other day, she was telling us yesterday, she said in a, in, a, in a small group in the cell that someone just got funding of 1.2 billion. Uh, I don't, after this, <laughs> someone just walked up to me, just, just today also, and said, Pastor, she's linked to my ear. He said, Pastor, the Lord is opening doors. He said, things are happening in the life journal center. I said, you don't understand. Once the spiritual door is open, the spiritual controls the physical, the physical door must open. The challenge is when you are opening doors in the physical that have been closing the spirit, you will be frustrated. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So see what the king said. So Balaam said unto her, um, so it says, curse them, verse 11, but eventually I shall be able because and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the prince of Balak, get thee into your land, for the Lord refused to give me leave to go with thee. As the prince of Moab rose, they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Watch the next thing. And Balak said yet again, princess, more honorable, more princess, more honorable they were. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, he said, the son of Bill, let nothing I pray thee hinder you from coming unto me. For I will promote you. Now they came with promises. He says, I will promote thee unto very great honor. And I will do whatsoever you say to me. Now come therefore, I pray, curse the people. And Balaam answered and said to the people, the servant of the of Balak, if Balak will give me this house full of gold and silver, I cannot go beyond the word of God to do less or to do more. Now therefore, I pray thee, tarry ye also tonight. Let me tell you something there. Eh? Are you seeing the game? The prophet is not a game player. He says, if you promise him that I can't go anywhere. He said, but wait, let me ask. Does God change his mind? He knew what he wanted. He was just playing religion. <laughs> I'm telling you, what was not the will of God yesterday cannot be the will of God today. <laughs> because you don't understand, his man that changed his mind, the God is eternal. He does not change his mind. The guy knew what he was doing. Do you see? He said, he said, hey, this is what he, he knows what he was doing. He said, wait tonight. He said, so, so he played a religious game. You know what? This is not about money. This is not about money. I hear you. What was he about? It's about the word of God. As God not spoken, don't worry. I'll go and ask him again. I will show you something now. Something you need to see. And when you see this thing, you will shout. Watch. And God came up to Balaam at night and said, <laughs> and see, did you see? Balaam did not pray. God was coming to himself. <laughs> to show the disposition of God. But he didn't pray. Oh. God was coming to himself. He says, God came to Balaam at night and said, if the men come up to call thee and go with them, and, and yet the word which I say unto do, thou shalt do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and sat with Isaac. Watch, oh. And went with them. Verse 22. He said, the Lord came to him, right? Not that I came to the Lord. Verse 22. See, it's either God is, not, is confused or something has happened. Verse 22. Right? Let's want to go. And God's what? Because what? Question. How can God say go and you'll be angry? Because he never said so. 
Balaam hid himself. Listen, you can begin to hear yourself in this thing. You will psych yourself so much and you begin to hear yourself. And you now say, the Lord said, see, there's deception at stages. There's a stage you know you're deceiving yourself. Then there's a stage you are not even aware of your deception. That's where it's worse. Watch now. Watch. Let's read. The Bible says this, and the Lord anger was kindled against him and he went. And the angel of God, what? Question. Let me show you this. Is it possible for God to say you should go and an angel will stand in your way? He has not been born. God will tell you to do something. An angel will stand in your way. That angel has not been created. The reason why is that angels are designed to perform the castle of his word. Yes or no? So what does that mean? Angels only do what he said. So how do we know that Balaam was doing the wrong thing? Because the angel was doing the right thing. And if the angel does that outside the will of God, the angel is in rebellion and must be cast out from heaven like Satan. Question. And this is the first thing. Why am I praying about something I'm not hearing God? Number one, because you have what you want to do. You already know. All this what you are saying, that Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, where should I go? Should I, Lord, is, is it your will? I should stay in Abuja, I should move to Ibadan. You already know where you are going to. All this is the Father, I'm just asking for your will in matter. You know that who you want to choose is Shineme. You know, it's, it's clear. You are just, see, you are just doing formality. It's in your heart already. You made up your mind. But so that you don't feel the burden. You, you, see, you want to migrate. You send in your passport. You pay deposit. You didn't pray at that time. It's when you submitted and they sent you back visa. That you now begin to say, Father, is it your will to go? When you were submitting, you didn't find that will. One lady sent me a message. He said, Pastor, what you are preaching is very powerful. He said, because as soon as I got my Canadian PR approval, he said, I've lost total peace. And I wanted to say to her, he said, because the truth was that I did not pray. And let me say to you, everybody, not every open door is God's door. Some open doors are demonic traps. I need to be aware. So I said, what do you mean? I hope you realize in your Bible that they were trying to take Jesus Christ to make him king. It's not every good thing that comes your way is a testimony. They were trying to take Jesus Christ. Why didn't he say, yes, yes, make me king? He said, if you make me king, you will destroy my assignment. Some places are looking for, some places where you take crown is a trap. They want your head. It's not the crown they want to give you. It's your head they want to take from you. And you will not know until the head goes. If Satan cannot get you through failure, will you success will fight you. Oh, no, shut up. Did you hear what I said? If Satan cannot get you through failure, he will use success to fight you. Ask Solomon. Ask Solomon. Glory to God. So why am I? So you're wondering this? You see, let me tell you. You are trying to do this business partnership. You like this guy because this guy is bringing some piece of the money. He's the one that is bringing 500 million. You are only bringing 150. The other guy is bringing 750 million. And you're not saying, Father, which of them should I go with? You know who you want to go with because you can see. So the reason why people don't hear the voice of God, you see, Balaam's heart was in the money. You could tell because initially, why is he telling them to sleep overnight? The nature of the prophet, you cannot tell people to sleep overnight. People are not Jews. This disposition you take that shows that you're already out of the will of God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. My sister told me one time she was living abroad. She said, you know that I can do your residency. He said, but you don't have to live here, but you can have the residency. I said, I don't want. He said, what's the problem? I said, it is one step out of the will of God. From residency, you visit often. From visit often, you have a flat. From have a flat, you enter. And you never come out again. Most people don't know this. You don't determine where you get to. You determine the path you are on. Why? The path you are on eventually takes you there. Glory to God. 
So why don't we put you at the voice of God? Because there's a preferred thing. There's, there's, pre- there's preference. So Saul had pre- sorry, Balaam had preference. He loved when he saw the money, when he saw the promises. Ah. This is why some people, when they profess up election, this is why they get into trouble. You know why? They cannot see clearly. They already have their candidates. So, number, and you know why they have the candidate? Because if this person enters, even while he has not entered, they are serviced. This is why you will just see some pastors declare something with Jesus Christ, with all the respect we have for you. How can you say this? Ah, because ah, the man has come for prayer. He has come for prayer. He has bought, he has bought $1 million. He has bought $5 million. You have prayed. You have fasted. Even when God is saying no, you say, God, I can change it. Ah, we have a, match, a covenant with you. You know, so I had a dream. Why won't you have a dream? The money you received that tonight became your dream. Glory to God. And you, know, you know your spec. You know your spec already. Once they are tall, dark, handsome, six pack, and the brother now drives a Range Rover or a G-Wagon and a single. Hey, somewhere down on the has a nice house. Ah. He says, um, is this the will of God? Say, Pastor, the will of God came to me, not that I prayed. Glory to God. You, you know. Some of you is that girl's black, that girl skin color. You, that, so what do they do? You know. In fact, my wife was sharing something with me that was very powerful. You know, there's this friend of ours. She's, is, and this is nothing to anybody. Please don't take it personal. Just share it. A very close friend of ours. All the girls he dates, extremely light skin colored girls. I didn't even notice until my wife told me. But all the relationship shortly, shortly, shortly. The day he brought a dark colored girl, my wife said he will marry this girl. He said, you know, I didn't, it was later. I said, why? Ah, he said, because for the first time, I think he looked more than the skin. Yeah. And that was exactly what happened. The reason why I'm saying so, when you're going to the will of God, you must know your tendencies. Are you getting me? You see, you don't understand. You're the one that says, Father, choose anything for me. Do you think God hears you? He says, I look at the hearts. <laughs> you, you, want to play, you want to play for one eye on God. He says, Father, I'm here. Anything you want. God says, I'm not hearing the words. I'm looking at your heart. Your heart doesn't say what your mouth is saying. Are you here, somebody? So one of the major reasons, one of the major, major reasons why people don't hear the voice of God, there's a preferred idea, there's a preferred thing they want to do. And the reason why they prefer is, is this, they don't really believe that the best place you can be is in the will of God. When I was going to become a pastor, I, I mean, this thing is very powerful, I was going to become a pastor, start the church. Start the church, that's all. I said I will do ministry. So I was, I was, it was two ways. Starting the church was not a good idea because where would I even get the money to start the church? Where would I get the money to do the venue? I, there was no support. So I told my friend, I said, oh, let me be a pastor in a church. So I was looking for to be a pastor in a church. Maybe like House on the Rock or you know, those kind of churches. Not just any kind of church, any church that can pay. Well, <laughs> let's be honest. Should I not be honest? Yeah. Eh. Ah. So they eventually took me to the Victor Day and me. Global Harvest Church. And then Victor, we, I went to Ibadan. Ah, I said, Ibadan is my future. At least here, nobody knows me. If I don't do well or do well, I just manage a place like this thing here. I'm in the will of God. You know what? It's just suppressing the guidance, quenching it. Next thing I came back to Lagos, one of my mom's tenants had told me that they were doing chest in this bank. It's collapsed now. Ah, thank God, the age, my God, I'll have lost my job. You know, <laughs> Fountain Trust Bank. Ha! Ah. You know, I'd gone there. When I was praying for the test, the Spirit of God said, what are you praying for? I said, I just want to know if I can even get employed. I want to know. <laughs> you know, God knows us. <laughs> you know, because, you know, why, why are you on the path? I just want to know. And the truth is that once you know, you're past level one. You're past level two. You now get let off employment. To now refuse after, because those days the entry was 1.2 million. Wow. Those days, big money. Well, you can, in a year, you buy a brand new Toyota Corolla, or the minimum is a Yaris. 
Because all those cars were one point something, two point something those days. Brand new, not Okumbo. So, you could see the future. But when you think of ministry, you just see them, amen, amen. You, you can't even see jump set. You just see people clapping there, blessings and glory. And Victor said, let's see again and conclude everything. I never went back. Because I knew if I'd gone back, that's the end. The test I took, I took the test too, but I never saw my result. I never went back. I never called. Because I knew once I do this, I'll miss it. Are you not glad I'm here? Yeah. By now, I will have become your account officer. <laughs> and you have been telling me you're an idiot. How can I send money to the bank and you don't have it? God, don't tell me that. Are you stupid? He said, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> With all the anointing, you've been telling me all of that. Listen to me. The thing is that the will of God may not pay initially, but it will pay eventually. The will of God may not pay initially, but it will pay what? Eventually. You may look stupid in the interim, but you will eventually enjoy the will of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why am I not hearing the voice of God? The first one is a prophet ideology. The second one is there's a conflict in the soul. That was the problem of Saul. But why couldn't Saul? Why was Saul struggling with God? It was a conflict. What was the conflict? On one area, Saul knew that David was going to become king after him. How did he know? Because he said to himself. He prophesied. On another area, he wanted children to take over. And because of that, there was... Come, 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 come. You know, let, let me get, let, let me get, let me get. Yeah, yeah, come. There was a conflict in the soul. The spirit and the soul, they began, they began to struggle. They began to struggle. They, there was a conflict. There was a conflict. See, you don't understand. The voice of God does not come in confusion. It comes in peace. This place where you are in, where there's a conflict, you can never hear the voice of God. But the moment you say, be still and know I am the Lord, there you will hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. For you to hear on the inside, there must be quietness on the outside. Be still, sir. There's a lot of conflict. The reason why you can't hear the, you know, you know some, this your age is why you can't hear the voice of God. Because you say, ah, I'm 35, I'm 38, I'm this. Some of you, is the poverty that can make you hear the voice of God. You cannot, because everything is seen through poverty perspective. Money is a, pers- it's a strong perspective. And God says, it's either I have my way or there's no way. Are you here? Where's my pipe? Where's my hose? Glory to God. I say glory to God. When it comes to hearing the voice of God, it's two ends. There's a hearing, there's a hear that receives. There's a hear that comes out through. The major problem is that between these two directions, there's a blockage here. What's that blockage? The conflict in the soul. Was that blockage? So you will just say that God is speaking. Can, can you pour me some water here? God is speaking here. But ho- guess what? It should naturally, oh, it's fine now. It should naturally come out here. It's not coming out. Why? There's somewhere in between where the thing has blocked. So when people are saying they've not heard the voice of God, check your spirit. Where is the block? Check your spirit. Where is the block? The reason why is that God will not remove the block for you. You have to remove it yourself. How do you remove the block? Consecration. What's consecration? Consecration means, Lord, not my will. Just be done. Did you notice Jesus Christ? He went to pray. And until the God... To, see, let me tell you something. You can be praying with what you want to and be saying, not my will, not be done. C- can we be honest today? Outwardly, Father, not my will, yours be done internally. Lord, if you don't do this, I will not do it. I'm telling you. Didn't you hear what Peter said? Master, if we die, we die with you. If you do, we do with you. If you do, we do. The Bible said, that night, he denied him three times. Are you here? 
He said, Father, all, 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 I want, all I want is a happy marriage. God knows it's not a happy marriage you're looking for. You are looking for a rich man that will spoil you nothing. Either he's born again or not, it's not important. Once he can take care of you, he can take care of you. That's what you're looking for. He said, Father, I'm just looking for your will. He knows. You know, the good thing about God is that he doesn't just hear what we say. He sees what I have to say. Many of you, are, I remember when we called to the gospel, and this happens. When we called to the gospel, some of my friends, they were meant to start churches and be in the ministry. You know what they said? They said, no, no, no. You people go first. We'll be sponsoring you. One of them is in Canada today. He said, he said, I, he said I personally commit that every time you look back, you'll find me there sponsoring you. And I know that after I sponsor some time, I will go to the ministry. Our church is over 15 years. That guy has not first sent me the first one either. He's not sent me the first one. And the reason I'm, this thing I'm saying is deep. You want to make a kind of change, you just change. See, there are certain things, there are certain things you need the guidance on very carefully. Money, marriage, relocation. The will of God must be clear in those three areas. Or else you will waste your resources. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So why don't people consistently hear the voice, hear the God, voice of God on something? Number three, they consistently ignore guidance. That, that's what the Bible says. Who is as blind as my prophet, seeing so many things, but guess what? Doesn't see them. God is always raising up check signs though. There's, see, you know, there's always sign in the spirit, sign in the spirit, sign, and, and people are always ignoring them, ignoring them. And God says, why do you keep doing this? Don't you know, let me say something to you. Do you know the more you ignore something, the more you don't see it? Uh, let me give an example. Have you walked, driven past a heap of, uh, of debt before, maybe your way to work on office, and the first time it was an eyesore, you didn't like it, you felt irritated, you smelt it, you saw it. What happened? After two years, you stop seeing it. Yes or no? Why? Because you've deleted it from your mind. The more you ignore divine guidance, the more your spirit will recognize it. You're not saying God is not speaking, but he's speaking. But you're not recognizing it because for a long time, you have been deleting the guidance. I, 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 shared, I, I shared in the other service, you know, I, I shared previously, and one of them I said was that, someone said, how do I know the voice of God? I, and I explained this to you. I said, you, you cannot mistake the voice of God. Though. Hey! I said, number one, the voice of God's bonds. When God talks, it feels like fire. How many of you have heard that before? Let me show you in the scripture now. Luke chapter 24. Let me show you quickly. Uh -huh. Verse 32. The Bible says, and they said, this was the referring to Jesus Christ, and they said to one another, they did not our heart burn within us. When he what? Let me tell you something. If I'm talking God's word to you, and it's for you, there's a way you were born inside. You will think everybody's you are the one that is burning because the world is eating it up. Ah, that's how you know the voice of God. I'll, I'll give an example. I, I <laughs> you know, what, what they call it. We're going to start the church in Abuja. We have been going up and down, going up and down. And someone just said, Pastor B, when was this church going to start? And as he asked me that question, if you saw the fire, like it was heat, I knew that the Lord. What he said was not what he was saying. The Lord was speaking through that mouth. The second way you know the voice of God is this. The voice of God is heavy. The vo when God's word comes to you, it's heavy. It's because it's a hammer. It has a weight. The word is it's weighty. And the way I said this before was this. Have you noticed that sometimes we just say, let's give our tithe an offering, and from nowhere you feel the pressure. Yeah, you... The reason why is that the word came for it just come heavy. Boom. Because there's something you should have done. You should have not, you have not done. It should just come. 
Because the word of God is hammer. It has, it has weight. You just hear that. A lot of us need to be more prayerful, especially for our children. And a lot of parents are here. But all of a sudden, there's a weight draws on you. It, it, it's almost as if it draws on you. And because the word of God has what? Weight. Why am I not hearing the voice of God? Because of emotions. Oh, yeah. Emotions are powerful. Let me tell you what it is. Let me explain this to you. If you're not careful, you can be so sensitive about something, you never want anybody to touch it. Even your husband or your wife. When they talk, you can be so sensitive. I don't even know what I'm talking about. That people can talk. It can be about someone, about the past, about your money, about your parents, about something. You don't want anybody to talk about it. And the see, so what you do is this. Oh my God, come, 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 sir. You come. You're coming, sir. This is what you do. J just, just wait. This is what you j Just wait. This is what you do. This is that emotion. You protect it so much. You protect it so much. Pastor Judge, come. You, Pastor Judge, come. I want you to protect him. Protect him. Protect him. This is your emotions. Because of maybe a pain. Maybe some, for example, if you've gone through, watch this now. If you've gone through a lot of pain from your mother-in-law, and God says, forgive her. It will be difficult to hear. Because of the pain. So, when God wants to touch, your emotion prevents. God wants to touch, but God says, come, let me. God, God wants to touch you, but God cannot touch you. Because the pain prevents it. If you had a terrible breakup, and the Spirit of God says, it's time to love again. You say, to, what, what was love again? You, you begin to, you begin to, you, you, you begin to do this. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And there's an area of your life where you're protecting yourself from God. Oh my God. There's an area of your life. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. There's an area of your life where you're protecting yourself. And God is even protected from that area. Some of you here, it's the issue of business. You have lost money. And God says, go back again. And when God says, go back again, God wants to touch you here. You, you, you begin to protect, you begin, and God says, let me touch your business. You say, don't touch, because I've gone through someone. So you begin to nurse your pain. You, 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 you are limping, but it's okay to limp. It's, you are limping, but God, don't touch me. It's okay to limp. I'm, I'm limping. It's okay. It's okay to limp. I'm limping. It's okay. It's okay. I'm limping. I would rather I would limp than someone touch this pain. How do I know? When they say, let's fast and pray about that area. Even though you have a problem, you will never pray fast and pray about it. Because you are exhausted. If you want to do it, do it. If you are not doing it, don't do it. I can't come and what? Kill myself. And what is happening is that because of the pain and the disappointment over the child, over the marriage, over the capital, over the capital, over the you prevent God. You don't even want to expose. What a normal person would do is to expose himself and say, God, touch me. But what you do is to cover yourself and you cover your shame and say, God, don't touch anything. Don't let anybody speak to this. Don't let anybody speak to this. Don't let anybody speak to this. Don't let anybody... And meanwhile, you are breaking down when you are crying. Meanwhile, you are in pain and you are in tears. Meanwhile, this thing is hurting you. And God is saying that I'm the burden lifter. I'm the way maker. I can help you. He said, I'm so tired. I would rather not remember it than to bring it out for healing. Can I shock you, church? The things we hardly talk about is where the biggest pain is. The things we hardly talk about is where the biggest pain is. The deepest pain I hardly spoken about. Not even the pastor knows. Not even your husband knows. Not even your wife knows. Not even your mother knows. Not even your child knows. And you carry that pain. And you hide it so much that even God cannot touch it. And that's why God cannot speak to it. Did you see the life of David? He was a great worshiper, but he had a lot of pains. You saw how he moved from woman to woman. He was struggling with acceptance and loneliness because nobody accepted him from home. 
he was the least of his family members. So he looked for the acceptance Jesse, his father, could not give him. His brothers could not give him. What did he look for? He was looking for it in the hands of women over and over and over and over and over again. And instead of him, him was a prophet. Him that knew God to come out and say, Lord, heal me. He was covering it up. And did you see how that transferred to his son Solomon? And Solomon became worse than him. And they had the generation of people that could not sustain the seeds of David just because of a family flaw that started from an anointed person. You can be anointed and be wounded. You can be anointed and wounded. And the nature of God is this. You have to come to me, all ye the heavenly brethren, and I will give you rest. He doesn't force rest on you. You have to come. And this service is about coming. How many of you have been really hurt? You're really, really hurt. Just hurt by the fact that you're not married on time. Hurt by the marriage you are in. Hurt by your finances is breaking down. Hurt that your prayers have not been answered. And you're so hurt and you protect yourself so much. That place is so cold that God can get through. And you know what God told Martha and Mary when he got to the tomb of Lazarus? He says, Lazarus can come down, but you have to roll away the stone. The question is that, what have you buried behind the stone? Oh. You buried it, but what have you buried? And God says, roll it away, let me touch you. And he says, sir, it's thinking. God says, I know it's messy, but I can bring it back to life. And some people, it will be an abuse. And let me tell you, can I just, can we just get deep today? Yes, Do you know a lot of people, ladies I know, the reason why they're single, not because they want to be single, they were messed up when they were young. And in their mind, they still see the male, de- male gender as danger. And unfortunately, they can't talk about it. Do you know how many people here addicted to pornography guys and all of those things and it was someone that was close to them that messed them up as a child and they still cannot look for help because they brought a stone to close it I've been through pain I've been through pain and, and sometimes I notice when my wife touches some areas there's a pain I feel because I'm the kind of person that I have no memory of my father carrying me up I have no memory of my father carrying him up. Neither do I have a memory of a hog. I'm that kind of person. You know what it made me when I grew up? It made me very clingy to people. And people began to take advantage of me because I became very clingy. And it's, you know, all of it that grew up with this fantastic home and talk about all those things, it's difficult until you allow God to begin to heal. The challenge is that instead of you to allow to heal, you protect, you hide, you protect, you hide. And it begins to show up in other areas. Why doesn't God speak to you? Because there's an area where you're protecting that God needs to speak into. Let's pray.